it's not like a transducer. You stick on there and you're done. Uh, you know, they're, they're, they're set up. You know, this has, a, has an arrow that has to point at 12 o'clock. You know, if you go bopping down the lake and, you know, and your head turns, turns a little bit, yeah. and you put it back in, now, now you're looking over here or over there. Um, one of the things I do with setup is I make sure that when I have my trolling motor set where I normally have it, I always put it right here at 12 o'clock, right on top. Um, you know, this way here, when I put it in the water, I know that this is at 12 o'clock. Uh, whereas some guys have it mounted, you know, this here itself is mounted over here, or it's mounted over here. And when you go bumping down the lake, you don't know if it's exactly at 12 o'clock when you put it in. Right. Whereas if you set everything up, and you have it set right 12, you could come before you launch it, you can look right over top and say, okay, I'm 12 o'clock, make sure you're tight. And the biggest you know, thing that I pay attention to is our tides. Uh, one of the things that I found is when I fish at high tide, the fish will take to a moving bait better. Um, if I'm bumping it off the rocks or if I'm bumping off of a lay down, because at low tide, a lot of times those, those fish will move off of those places and they're less active. That's times when I find that a shaky head or a drop shot or dragging a jig are better techniques. Slower moving baits and finesse. My range set at 80 feet. Right. And so each ring is good for 20 feet. So basically you got 20, 40, 60, 80. Okay. So that kind of gives you, you know, your, your, your casting area, if you will. Now, over here in front of this opening and sort of around the spend a little bit, you're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna see a bunch of structure. You can see some of it starting yep. right here. So let's, um, and it's not near. And you know, there's, there's different angles here. We're gonna see, but you see, you see these shadows being created. Yep. This is all big. This is all big pile of junk, junk piles. Um, you know, there, there, there's lay downs in here. There's debris. There's all kinds of stuff. You can see it here. If you look at my rod tip, I'm stuck in it already. And just by, you know, by me coming here and just fishing as I normally would, I found this stuff. What a better image than the so, ranch spotlight. It's, yeah, it's really, night and day. It's unbelievable. Night and day difference. So, so, so right now I'm looking at this edge, you know, which is our wall. And then I'm looking at this debris that's right here is creating a shadow. And, you know, it, it, it allows me to make pinpoint casts, you know, right to what it, what it is that I'm trying to fish here. And these are the kind of places that you'd want to look for fish on a low tide. So I'm gonna, we, we have a dead slack low tide, but I'm going to try, you know, casting my jig out and bumping over some of this uh, structure down here. I'm going to try to stay off the bank right now because we have a, um, a really, really low tide, lower than normal. So I just wanted to hit a couple spots that, um, you know, have debris that's off the shoreline. I, I did get a bite here at the first stop, and... Uh, something went off with my jig and I had him stuck for a minute and it popped off. So, so you said that, like if you were if you were say pre-fishing for a tournament or you were in a tournament what you would have done there was probably just use a, a light line technique you'd have used a shaky head or yeah, something sure. like that on this type of a tide. Sure. So right now we're just going to run to a different spot and see if they'll hit what, a crankbait and a jig and... But with this low water still I'm probably going to still uh, finesse fish uh, but after I go through an area, sometimes uh, if the water gets moving here for us, then I'll probably start throwing some moving baits. Got a bass right off this oh, point. Yeah. Look at that. The old Bill Lewis rail trap. That's just what we were talking about. Yep. How, uh, you know, people just underutilize that rattle trap all times of year. Yep. Especially in shallow water, they don't want to throw it, but it's a bait to throw. There we go. On a chowder bait. So we were just looking, there's eel grass in here and some other types of grass and we were talking about that where a couple different kinds of grass come together near a turn, a little drop off, some rocks, they've got wood cover. Yeah, nice, uh, you know, two, two and a half pounder. Not a giant, but... Uh, but still, if it's a tough day, you had five. Oh yeah, sure. It always helps. Sure, just saw those isolated little clumps of grass and threw that white chatterbait in there to lose. Yep, this is uh, one of the loose uh, tournament pros. Um, it's got the carbon fiber handles, the new uh, EVA foam handles with the little cork edging on the, the sides of it. Yeah. And uh, it's a 
six uh, six eight to one. Now is this the uh, cust is this uh, the which rod is this? This is the custom rod that Tom made. The yep. Tom's custom rod. This is Tom's uh, custom rods here. And he put the Bass College logo. He'll put the Bass College logo on the rods for you. He'll wrap them in yep. team colors. He'll do rods for the military, whatever you, you want. He'll make it so it matches your boat and truck. And these are actually uh, not cork. They're the wind grips, and they're in the, uh, the cork um, finish and rendition of it. And these things are just fantastic. I mean, your, your hand gets wet. These things get even stickier. And the nice thing about that is he'll make a rod for you to say in a length that you can't buy a rod in. That's the idea. Well, it, exactly. And for me, being a shorter guy, I really, you know, was looking for um, a shorter rod, um, you know, just to help with, you know, flipping and, and pitching and stuff like that. And, you know, he was able to get me a rod in the action that I wanted, but also in the length that I wanted. Um, right. So, you know, this and then is, it's just a really good custom work too. Absolutely. You know, you can pick out specific guides that you want. Um, and, you know, I really trust Tom. So I just tell him to, yeah. you know, put on what he Sure. Because like a lot of times that. someone will say, well, I love the I-Rod, but I don't like the guides that they have on it. Or I like a G Loomis, but I'd like to have this handle. Well, Tom will turn a, a rod into a rod you want, but the handle, the action, the parabolic yeah. action, really you know, sure. the guides that you want, and that's the advantage of a custom rod like that. A a absolutely, and you know, he does great rod repair as well. I mean, I, I really like the new Johnny Mars Carbon Light uh, series and the, the, the white ones, and I had gotten a couple with the micro guides, the problem is they're so soft, they constantly... They bend. bend just bend yeah. over. The same thing um, um, the, that I had the problem with um, with those Abu Garcia rods when they first came out. The same ones. Um, what were they called? The Veritas. The Veritas. The eyes were soft and would bend like that the yeah. same way. But I liked the rod. I mean, I thought they were a little stiff and stuff. But, I mean, for the price, they weren't a bad rod. But, and the only complaint I had was that. So the nice thing about a custom rod is you can just design it the way you want, really. And Tom does a great job. He, you can stop in the site and just job. click right through to Tom's custom rods and then they can talk to him. He's in the forums. Too. Mike Centaur with a little better one on up here in the front. It's on a chartreuse spinnerbait, isn't it? Yep. Oh, that's a nice one. Fish. Yeah. You had them double, doubled up. Yeah. Let's see that, Mike. Turn that around this way. Oh yeah, that's a nice fish, isn't it? Yeah. All right. Come back and see him tomorrow. Well, last bass of the day on the Chesapeake Bay. There you go. Uh, down here with Mike Centaur and Mike Ward. Ben Werbos is still up in the creek and getting ready to fish the tournament tomorrow. So we'll see you next time down here on the water.